Hi there, my name is Terzi Engelhardt, and I want to welcome you to the Unreasonably Grateful podcast, Living in Grace by Choice. And those of you who have been with me for a while recognize that every week I say something very similar to welcome. I'm so grateful that you're allowing me to share my journey with you, which I do through sharing stories from my uh, 38 years of recovery after 20 years of living an addictive lifestyle, struggling with an eating disorder while recovering from sexual abuse as a teenager. And, you know, over those years, um, through all of the efforts that I made and the people that I met and the stories that I listened to, I gleaned little bits of wisdom that have guided me uh, and helped me stay healthy and become more of who I was originally designed to be. And so I share from that place, knowing that when we listen to somebody else's stories, it's oftentimes easier for us to hear things that give us insights or clues about our own journey and help us take the next step. And that's my hope. I was telling my husband that I looked up some of the statistics after a few years of doing this, and it's something like, I don't know, 43,000 unique downloads. And I found myself thinking, if only one person's life was impacted, it's been well worth it. So if you know someone, and I mention it in the description of this particular episode, that could use prayer, invite them. Invite them to listen in. Um, remembering that an invitation is some version of who I am is love, because that is who you are. And when we can get out of the way and let that unconditional love flow through us, we can invite people from that place of, and I'm here to serve. So um, also on Tuesdays, I offer individual sessions and I love those sessions. Some of you have come to see me some more than often. I mean, more than once. And always I feel privileged and honored to sit with you and to reflect how beautiful and amazing you are give you some little insights that might, again, sort of ease you along on your own journey. And I believe we're all on a journey. You know, you don't necessarily have to be identified as someone who's recovering from something, although perhaps all of us are. We're here still moving along, um, pulling together all those shattered, broken off pieces of ourselves and becoming more of who we were created to be. And that's a beautiful, beautiful process. And it's not easy. So, um, yeah, invite them to listen in. And if you're interested in the Tuesday session, you can sign up at tercyanglehart.com under Work Together. And I'll look forward to getting to know you a little bit more personally. Okay, so last week I shared with you a line from a really beautiful prayer that I learned years and years and years ago. And that line was, um, you know, you know better than I what I need. So give me that. And after I finished that episode, I was thinking about, oh, there's so many lines in that prayer that I want to share. And then I want to give you a little bit of background about this last week. So a really really impactful friend passed away this week, someone who impacted our family in a big way. He was a landmark forum leader who are some of the most extraordinary human beings who dedicate their life to walking into a room and causing transformation for over a hundred people at a time. And Richard Condon was one of those people. And he also worked very closely with our upper management team and in Cafe Gratitude and Gracias Madre. And he's a good friend of our sons. 
And our son, one of our sons was able to see him just before he passed. And he sent us this small little video. And Richard had a, another good friend of ours, uh, death doula, to assist him in his transition. He was, he was fighting cancer and he chose not to do chemotherapy and radiation. And um, he went more quickly than he thought he would. And in an upcoming episode, I'll read you a book he wrote while he was actually dying. And another good friend of ours put it together graphically and illustrated it. Um, and it's called The Way Out. And I'll make an episode about that. But anyway, it was so beautiful. I mean, it's heart-wrenching to watch someone when they're shifting between this life and what comes next. But what I was left with was he was peaceful. And our son leaned over and whispered in his ear and kissed him on the forehead. And Richard moved. And I found myself thinking, wow, even at this stage, he can feel the presence of love and the prayers that are being prayed for him. So that was one one particular episode. Then a son-in-law uh, had to have an emergency surgery in the middle of the night, just about a week ago. And he had a blockage and they removed a tumor and he lost part of his colon and appendix. And it was traumatic and it was a difficult, it was a difficult surgical situation. It wasn't the most pleasant of uh, interactions and our daughter was caring for their four children and worried about what their life was going to look like. And oh, there were so many things. And I reached out and I asked people who I know pray to pray for him. And it was so beautiful to hear the response and that those people kept him on their heart and in their mind enough that over the following week, they would check in to find out how he was doing and if we had the pathology report back. What I was present to is the power of a community praying together. And so I, I share that because I think sometimes we all get a little shy and we don't ask people even if we know they pray, we don't ask them to pray for us or with us, for someone we love and care for. And I want to encourage you to do that because I do believe that prayers are heard and prayers are answered. And um, there was something, again, the experience of peace, peaceful about knowing that there were these prayerful friends, these prayerful warriors praying on behalf of someone I love. So that said, I want to share with you another line or two from this prayer. And let's see here, I'm going to recite it so I get it right. Um, so one of the lines is, thou lovest me better than I know how to love myself. So think about that. I think that most of us fall short of feeling worthy of the unconditional love of a creative God, the uh, loving without conditions. We've all, we've all made mistakes. We've all missed the mark of love in our life many times, probably. We all have layers of regret, remorse, guilt, shame, whatever. And to know that there is a love that loves you better than you love yourself. So remember those, the first line was, you know better what I need. I don't even know what to ask. So you know better what I need. So give me that. And you love me more than I love myself. So what you're going to be given comes from a deep and unconditional and everlasting love. And wouldn't you want that? So that's the other line I wanted to share with you because just imagine that that's what we 
are praying for? Because sometimes I think, you know, prayer, we think that prayer is about asking for something and getting that, as opposed to give me what you know and have that come from a love that's greater than the love I could even fathom for myself. So take that on this week. Pray for people in your life, and it's fine to pray for God to give you what you need and have that come from a God who loves you better than you love yourself. And I'll be here next week, and I look forward to seeing you then.